so this is lecture number four in the series on microprocessors. Uh, so far we have uh, studied the pin diagram of 8085, what the function of different pins of 8085 are. Uh, so this has given us a general idea about uh, the different uh, important features of 8085 that we'll be studying. Uh, today we'll be looking at uh, some of the important uh, states of microprocessor. We are mainly talking about 8085. These, this is, these states are, uh, you can generalize them for other microprocessors, but we are talking in particular uh, with reference to 8085. So we'll be talking about different states of microprocessor, uh, different uh, functions of my uh, different programming functions of microprocessor. So uh, we understand a program, uh, basically a microprocessor executes a program. So a program is simply a set of instructions that uh, is acting upon some data to process it. This we have already defined. Now, uh, depending upon how we actually process this information uh, in the microprocessor uh, we have instruction cycle uh, machine cycle and the t states of the microprocessor that need to be understood fine so we have a program that it, that it actually a sequence of instructions uh, that acts upon some data to process it this processing takes place uh, over a period of time and certain this time that will be required uh, and how many steps actually are required to process this information that we need to see and accordingly we'll be defining uh, different cycles uh, times these are actually related to time uh, how ex exactly the process is executed in the microprocessor so we'll be defining instruction cycle machine cycle and the t states of a microprocessor. So first up, the instruction cycle. Uh, instruction cycle can actually be defined as the time taken by the microprocessor to execute an instruction. Fine. So program is actually composed of a set of instructions and among them one instruction that the microprocessor and the time actually the microprocessor takes to execute one instruction is actually referred to as the instruction cycle. So different instructions may actually take different times for execution. Uh, so uh, this actually depends upon different instructions may take different times for execution different may have different execution times rather Fine. So one instruction, uh, how long of the microprocessor takes to execute one instruction is referred, is known as the instruction cycle. Different instructions may now take different amount of execution time. That means the instruction cycle for different instructions may be different. Now, what does this depend upon? This will depend upon actually uh, three important steps. One will be fetching, second one will be the decoding, and third one will be the execution. Fine. So there are actually three steps involved in uh, the process of uh, executing an instruction. The first process is that of fetching. So the microprocessor will actually uh, fetch uh, the instruction that needs to be executed. Secondly, it will start decoding the mnemonics. So this instruction will be written 
on some memory location uh, whose address will be available to us we need to fetch so we need to first of all get the address uh, once we have the address then we'll be able to uh, retrieve the information from that address so that is actually known as fetching process so this fetching process is actually again uh, will take over a period of time similarly once we have now the uh, instruction now we need to start decoding it fine so most of the so the programming language that we actually use in 8085 is uh, assembly language programming uh, the microprocessor needs to decode this into uh, the machine language programming fine so we'll have say for example we actually have instructions written in hexadecimal the microprocessor will fetch it and then convert it into binary decimals that's actually known as decoding of mnemonics fine De uh, so this process will also take some amount of time and the third then will be execution uh, so this once we have oh, the instruction now available in decoded form only then the machine uh, only then the microprocessor will actually be able to execute this instruction now. so this instruction cycle uh, basically it takes a lot it will take some amount of time to fetch the data to decode the mnemonics and to execute the instruction uh, so this all is actually a part of the instruction cycle uh, so if we see uh, so if we look at a block diagram general block diagram it is, this is your microprocessor this is a memory location fine and this can be an IO device so what the microprocessor basically does is uh, on this memory location uh, each of these uh, locations have their unique addresses say for example uh, this has an address 1111 1110 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 uh, to the memory locations so on each location there might be written some data uh, it, the data will be actually an 8-bit data rather than being it will not be a 16-bit data the address lines are 16-bit the data in itself is actually only 8-bit so the microprocessor has to fetch the opcodes once it fetches the opcode say for example you have OA uh, it has to decode it and obtain uh, the binary equivalent of this fine so uh, 0a uh, so it obtains its binary equivalent um, is able to uh, once it has the decoded uh, instruction only then it will be able to execute the instruction so the instruction will be executed and uh, depending upon the execution uh, the data will be either either uh, written to an IO device, input dev output device, or to the memory location, or maybe some other uh, function, um, some other kind of instruction. So, this is actually the process of instruction cycle. You have to fetch the data, you have to fetch the instruction, uh, you have to fetch the opcode, the mnemonics, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's known as opcode actually, opcode or mnemonics. So this is actually uh, an instruction that is specifically uh, written in hexadecimal system in case of 8085. So machine codes are actually known as uh, operation codes or op codes in short form. Uh, for example, there are some instructions uh, that are used in 8085 like uh, LDA, MOVA so on and so forth so there are a number of instructions uh, uh, 74 instructions actually of 8085 and that will be st also studying uh, so this these op instructions these mnemonics are uh, decoded and they are actually written onto the memory in the form of assembly language program and then the microprocessor decodes them into a binary language program 
uh, once the execution takes place either the mem uh, data will be now written to an uh, output device or to a memory location so this these many uh, this whole time that it actually the microprocessor takes to the to perform this task to perform the completion of one instruction is known as instruction cycle after uh, instruction cycle you have what is known as a machine cycle so what is a machine cycle it's actually the time taken by the microprocessor to complete any of one operation of uh, the instruction cycle right? time taken by the microprocessor to complete any uh, to complete an operation or you can say any op any one operation of now what are what are those operations that uh, take place it can be either accessing the memory when we are actually accessing the memory either we are writing we are reading the op code or we are writing the data so it's uh, one operation or it can be an io device or accessing an io device or can be an acknowledgement of an external request like uh, or interrupts extra so in instructions uh, so machine cycle is actually uh, the time taken by the microprocessor to complete one operation of the instruction cycle uh, so in as we said in the instruction cycle there will be a number of operations the instruction cycle uh, will actually consist of fetching the op code uh, accessing the memory, fetching the op code, uh, decoding the op code, and then executing the ex instruction, writing onto the an I/O device or writing to a memory location. So there are a number of uh, processes, number of uh, steps that are involved in the execution of an instruction cycle. Now the time taken to ex for execution of any one of the operation of that instruction cycle is referred to as a machine cycle. Uh, so therefore we can say an instruction cycle consists of one to six machine cycles fine so any instruction the instructions that are actually uh, that uh, the instructions of 8085 uh, for execution any of the instruction of a microprocessor 8085 it may take it may take it one machine cycle or at most six machine cycles fine uh, we are not still uh, decided how much time that is but an instruction cycle will take one to six machine cycles depending upon uh, which instruction it is so as i said to you there are 74 instructions of 8085 that we'll be studying so we'll be seeing actually for each instruction how many machine cycles it takes fine uh, so the least you can see is the least you have is one machine cycle for an instruction so uh, for that case the instruction cycle and the machine cycle are equivalent and at most you will see uh, an instruction cycle taking six machine cycles of time now there are actually seven types of machine cycles not types of machine cycles but there are seven machine cycles uh, of 8085 microprocessor these are op code fetch machine machine cycle so the time taken for fetching the op code uh, from the memory location 
is referred to as opcode fetch machine cycle second uh, memory read machine cycle I'm going to write this as OFMC this as MR uh, DMC memory write machine cycle so these are self-explanatory memory read machine cycle is actually the amount of time taken to taken by the microprocessor to read uh, from the memory location memory write machine cycle is that amount of time for the microprocessor it takes to write onto the memory location uh, similarly you have IO read machine cycle IO R M C fifth you have IO write machine cycle fine so IO read will be uh, time taken by for the microprocessor to read from the output input device and IO write machine cycle will be time taken for the microprocessor to uh, write onto the output device so as far as opcode fetch machine cycle is concerned this is actually completed in four to six four or six rather uh, no instruction actually takes five machine cycles uh, five uh, clock cycles this is completed in four or six clock cycle depending on the type of instruction fine that now clock cycle is actually 0.32 microseconds one clock cycle is 0.32 microseconds that we have already established for a microprocessor uh, depending upon its frequency so it will take four or six clock cycles for execution of an opcode fetch machine cycle depending upon the type of instruction it is while as these uh, four they will be completed in a minimum of three clock cycles so they may take more than three clock size cycles as well but they are completed in a minimum of three clock cycles it will take three clock cycles uh, minimum for execution of any of these four uh, machine cycles one clock cycle is equal to 0 0.32 microseconds so these are five uh, six type of machine cycle is bus idle machine cycle and interrupt acknowledge machine cycle so bus idle machine cycle and interrupt technology machine cycle again uh, we'll be discussing these machine cycles as uh, when and uh, when appropriate so again so we have studied so far instruction cycle and machine cycle then thirdly i'll actually change this So we have studied the instruction cycle one secondly we have studied machine cycle so instruction cycle is the time taken by the microprocessor for completion of one instruction machine cycle is the time taken by the microprocessor for execution of one operation of an instruction cycle fine so an instruction cycle may actually consist of one to six machine cycles although there are seven different types of machine cycles but at max an instruction will take only six machine cycles and for each we have enlisted seven different types of machine cycles that a microprocessor basically executes uh, for different types of instructions and for each we have established what will be the time taken for completion of that machine cycle 
that actually depends upon the clock cycle of the microprocessor that's 0.32 microseconds uh, then we have t states of the microprocessor so uh, <coughs> now t state will be defined as uh, division of one of the operations of the machine cycle so each machine cycle also takes uh, takes integral number of t states to basically comp cal uh, compute to complete Fine. A machine cycle takes integral number of clock cycles to complete. One clock cycle is actually referred to as uh, 0.32 microseconds. So each, so one of that operation of a machine cycle is uh, how much time it actually takes is referred to as the T state. Uh, so it's actually one subdivision now of the uh, machine cycle. And this T state is now synchronized with the clock of the microprocessor so in the last session i uh, said to you that there are actually 10 different t states t1 to t6 then t uh, hold t reset t hold and t rate fine so all those uh, T states uh, will take place over an uh, either all T1 to T6 as I said to you they only take one clock cycle for execution while as T hold uh, rest of the four T hold T ready uh, T reset T halt actually take integral number of clock cycles uh, now depending upon uh, different instructions and uh, whether the in whether we are having uh, whether we are actually acknowledging any interrupt from an external source we'll be seeing uh, we'll be actually seeing which t state the machine is operating in fine so t1 to t6 all of these take one clock cycle for completion while as rest of the rest for t hold t reset all take integral number of clock cycles for execution so in a microprocessor actually what we do is uh, the t states and the clock period are actually used synonymously uh, now so far so we have defined three things instruction cycle machine cycle and the t states instruction cycle is the time taken for completion of one instruction machine cycle is time taken for completion of one operation of a instruction cycle and t state is actually uh, time taken for completion of the division of uh, one uh, t state is actually uh, defined as time taken by the microprocessor for completion of one operation of a machine cycle and it is so divided that one t state is equal to the uh, system clock cycle that is equal to 0 0.32 microseconds so we have already established that uh, different machine cycles take uh, different amount of clock cycles so now we can actually say opcode fetch machine cycle is actually composed of four to four or six t states and these three four instructions memory read memory write io read io write will actually be completed in a minimum of three t states or they can be completed in four or five machine state t states as well uh, so other machine cycles interrupt acknowledge machine cycle bus idle machine cycle so they can be actually uh, they will actually be taking uh, those other four types of machine cycles four other types of t states which actually take integral number of clock cycles so uh, that actually varies uh, how long the uh, interface the peripheral device is actually going to hold the microprocessor is going to keep it waiting uh, in some uh, whatever execution it is performing so it will actually vary for different 
in, uh, execution programs uh, from the peripheral device. So this is about uh, the uh, state of microprocessor, in which state the microprocessor uh, and the timing actually the microprocessor takes to for completion of each of the uh, instructions. Right? So in the next session we'll uh, start with the architecture of microprocessor 8085.